Like, how do you think things, how you view things now have changed through your experience of achieving some of the things that you maybe have dreamed of? Because I think a lot of people see them as like an end point, you know, like, mm. oh, I've played that festival or I've signed a record deal or, or whatever, you know, or apply that to your various career paths, whatever. Um, like having achieved some of those things, and obviously the goals, goalposts keep moving, don't they? But having achieved some of them, do you feel like your view on any of these sort of topics has shifted at all? Like, I suppose having jump, you know, gone over the clouds and see what, see what's what. Mm-hmm. Um, our part is it in some way what it lives up to be, sort of achieving these things you want to do, um, or is it like not at all, or somewhere in the middle? I'm guessing. But. I think the answer. There's two parts to the answer. One is that it, do, it does achieve to some degree, especially if you obsess over these things. Like if you've dreamed of playing, you know, Wembley Stadium your whole life, you know, and it's a bucket list thing. You never think you would do it. And then you do it. It's going to feel insane. Um, but I think what what I've learned is that the space that it occupies in terms of satisfaction and and just overall sustainable happiness at the end of the day, like the space that it takes up, it's not that big. Uh and, and it's kind of like fast food, like, you know, it, it's kind of just, it's there and there's a euphoria and a high and it's gone. Um, and there's pictures of it and there's video of it and there's memories and there's, you know, stories that you can, you can tell back and forth with people who are also there. Um, but it's, it doesn't stick around. And that's the one thing that, I don't think I ever really thought about um, that that stuff doesn't really matter. It, it was, I, I shouldn't reduce it to that. I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it's just not this, you know, omnipresent thing. Like when people say, oh, like this, whoever, whichever actress is Grammy winning or, or Oscar winning um, actress or actor, like, and they, they attach that tag to their name as if it's like branded on their forehead, you know, or say, I mean, they, they do that with periphery too. Gram, Grammy nominated periphery. Cause we got nominated for a Grammy in 2015, I think. Um, and nobody in the band thinks about it anymore, except, you know, people when officially touting us, it's always a Grammy nominated periphery in our minds. It's like, it may as well not even happen because it was such a fluky thing that happened, you know, eight years ago at this point, but those things aren't really part of, you know, your daily thinking past that first uh, phase of euphoria and, and sort of hype and this like sort of high around it. Um, and the thing that I've learned from that is the things that I held close to my heart before any of this stuff are even more important. And I've learned that those things are the real stuff of life, the real kind of main event of why I'm here, like time with my friends, time with my siblings, time with my parents, time with my wife, time with my dog, time with any, you know, any number of the hobbies and things that like, like going, going camping with my family, with, with my wife to go on walks, traveling with people I care about, like the same stuff that I loved back before any of that, like I love even more now because year after year, I'm becoming more aware of how much space that occupies in my heart, you know, like how much more whole that makes me feel as time goes on, as opposed to the music stuff, which don't get me wrong. The music is whether I like it, part, whether I like it or not, part of my identity. It's like who I am. I'm a musician. I love guitar. I love music. I fucking love heavy metal. I love all of it. But at the same time, like that's not, that doesn't ever dictate who I am day to day, person to person, who I'm talking to and who I'm communicating with. Like that's, that's not what I lead with. And at the end of the day, when I'm on my deathbed, I don't know, this is going to sound really lame, but I don't think those are the kinds of things that I'm going to be clinging to. Um, you know, when it's my time to go, you know, I'm I'm going to be thinking about the stuff that's, that's really occupied. I keep saying most of that space, you know, in, in my heart, you know, and that's, that's what I found out over the years. 